All right, fellas, in this test, we're gonna crank about 2,000 watts of power into an inline preheater. Check it out. We're gonna see what we can do here. We're gonna be running at flow rates of about half a liter per minute. So, this ought to be kinda cool. So, definitely not going to be very exciting, but wait till you see what I hook this thing up to. What I got here is a simple triac circuit. This is a router speed controller. And I use these to control motors and various other heating elements and things like that, transformers and stuff, and all different types of projects. And I've modified this one with a heat sink. Basically what I've done is just taken the triac and attached it to this heat sink that I got out of an old stereo. This is the original one. And as you can see, it's just not up to par. And basically what happens Anytime you're running the triac near the red zone, you'll basically burn this triac up. If you run in an extended period of time anywhere near the end of the spectrum, let's say you don't quite want it on full power, but you're somewhere in this area here, it will burn out pretty quick. And I've burned up about 20 of these and um, they're only $20 a piece, luckily. But essentially what I've got here I don't know how well you'll be able to see this is I've got two triacs connected in parallel on this unit right here and yeah, the lights kind of glaring Let's see if I can get you a shot of this okay so here we go try to get right up inside of this thing there's the electrolysis cell itself and hidden right back up in there see those two triacs those are connected in parallel and are being driven by the same driver, which is this bad boy right here. So we were able to turn this into a triac that can handle 30 amps at 120 volts. Now I've only run it to 24 amps max, but you're pretty much about ready to burn the whole building down at that rate. So I try to keep it under 20 amps and, uh, yeah, that's a really cool attribute about these things. You can buy two of them and um, hook them up in parallel. Now, this is just one circuit hooked up to those two triacs. The other one here is connected to that triac, which is just kind of piggybacking off the heat sink there. That controls this pump. That gives me a, cause you don't want this pump running full blast. Sometimes the turbulence can affect duty cycle. It foams up really bad. So, also, if you turn the pump up too high, it will actually heat the water up, negating the whole cooling process altogether. So, that's the, one of the main reasons I like to be able to turn that pump down real low, so we're not actually heating the water up more than we're cooling it. Which is a very weird phenomenon when you go to design a cooling system, and you've never done it before, you're going to run into that. What we've effectively done is created a 30 amp triac circuit that runs this high power electrolysis cell here. And this basically just turns water into hydrogen and oxygen for a special torch that I use. I mix this gas with acetone because it's a great brazing gas. The process is called gas modification. And essentially these things, that's where I learned how to use these. Now, you can also use it on stuff like uh, transformers and things like that. This is a high pressure oil pump that I built a while back. And it, it has a DC motor that is run off of a PWM. However, you are able to control the speed of the motor with this PWM, but this high amperage transformer is sitting here just cooking itself unless you have one of these attached to it. I typically also run a watt meter in conjunction with that so I'm not in the dark of, as to how much power I'm cranking into something and essentially we're going to be using this today we're going to be using that today to run this little bad boy right here which is essentially just a heating element for a hot water heater in your house a 2000 water that's hooked inside these pieces of steel pipe here. This is an inline heater that I built for some waste oil burner projects years ago. 
It has a thermocouple probe on the discharge port so that you can get a reading on the temperature. That's what this thing here is all about. And basically I have it connected to a garden hose right now. And we're gonna be adjusting the flow and just kind of looking at the temperature so that we can get off of this thing. And the reason we're doing that is we're gonna preheat the water in a steam cleaner that I've been selling on eBay. Basically this is a high powered propane torch the Zeus torch. That thunder's not sound effects, by the way. <laughs> and this bad boy right here is probably one of the meanest blow torches you'll ever see in your life. This thing uses compressed air assist and it mixes the propane at supersonic speeds. So you get a higher mix ratio per unit time. So we're able to burn probably five times as much gas and in, in this little space as we would a regular burner to give you an example this burner puts off about as much energy as this bad boy this thing puts out one heck of a flame we're talking about this big but you can't braise with this yeah it's got a little flux stuck on it but uh, as you can see here I was able to braise this quarter inch steel with that torch that's some big chunks of quarter inch steel I almost forgot to mention one thing about this mod guys you go to buy one of these you're gonna want to bypass the fuse which I have not done yet <clears throat> I just remembered that before we close this up we got to take these two wires and connect them together because you're not going to want to be jacking around with this fuse it's a 15 amp fuse and sometimes you're going to go a little bit above that in the experimental world so never mind the soldering iron that wire looks a little funky so anytime i've ever tried to use the fuse it just ends up wasting time. I always find myself doing something that requires a little more power than 15 amps. Yeah, maybe I'll put a little bolt in the back of that. Let's see what we got here. And that's a little big. see what we got going down here I used to be uh, quite in the habit of pulling over and picking up a piece of junk I see on the side of the road for parts like this <laughs> So there we go, we're booming. Let's hook this bad boy up. Let's see what we get. Gonna make sure we're off. We're gonna try and land this thing on, let's say 400 watts. We're right around 400 watts. At 75 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, not fooling around. Let's just crank this thing up to a thousand watts. I got time to jack it around. Well, it just dropped on me. It's hovering. Okay, now we're gonna crank it up to 1500 watts. Okay. Now start over fresh and go I want to go ahead and call it done right there and it's right at two minutes okay everything should be equalized we are 11.68 amps that's 994 watts 102 degrees discharge temp 
Okay. So. Yeah, we're definitely putting that sucker to use. Now when this gets to 150 degrees, we gotta chill. We're at 1500 watts. That's kind of interesting that the cords themselves are getting warm. And they are too, man. I can feel it. Let's stand back and take a look at the experiment. We've got uh, geothermal pollution. That is too cool. So we're at 106 degrees is what the thermal couple registers. I'm going to see what temperatures we get on the FLIR 1. Kind of close to that. I mean, and what you're seeing here is a reflection, oddly enough. That is weird. That is an infrared reflection. That's my hand. That's why we're seeing duplicates of everything. All right, so we're going to crank this thing up. Take it up to 2,000 watts. I'm on a very large extension cord, which is a dumb idea. I need to go to my other uh, power source here. That You never want to plug something in when it's got a high current draw. It'll cause an electrical cancer in your workshop. It'll start burning up all your plugs. This thing's very hot to the touch. We risk losing it if it gets too hot. We're up to 115 degrees. <laughs> that thing's saying something different. Oh man, that thing is screaming hot. Wow. So, this thing being hooked up with that cleaner is going to be insane. I don't like that. I don't want to do this. I'm going to bring that amperage down to 1500. 1500 watts, I mean. The reflection kind of messes with it. Look how hot we are all the way in the front like that. That's incredible. Then again, this is right where the heating element probably loops. So the water's probably stratified inside of there, even though... Oh wow, <laughs> it sure is, look at that. Total stratification, that is cool. We're at 138 degrees down there guys. 113, we're at 13 amps on the thermal couple, 1400 watts of input, and our triac smells like China. Oh man. Okay, we're at 130 degrees. Okay, I'm not interested in burning this triac up right now. Just when we get into the experiment phase, oh, did you see that? Uh, we're there, guys. 150 is my limit. Man, not cool. So this, maybe the way I have it sitting is bad. So we're definitely going to want to let this thing set in a specific position. I don't know that leaving it on its side is the best idea. But it's uh, getting pretty hot. And I'm going to let it go full bore here to cool everything down. Let's watch it cool off. And the reason I want to watch it cool off is because I want to know how much heating we were doing there. Let's get this bucket of hot water off of there. It's cooling down pretty quick. I didn't do a very good job of watching that cool off, did I? The wires are still hot. The thermal couple reads 70 Fahrenheit. Probably a lot of residual heat there.
It's saying 68 now. That's the electrical component there. Wow, there's still water in the line. The water's 68 degrees coming out of the hose, which I think is what we had at the beginning of the experiment. So, there you go, fellas. I don't know who's going to use that info, but I'm sure at least five of you can.